Greetings, it's the Prime Mutton here again. When City got drawn in Champions League Group G this season, we were drawn against Belgrade, Leipzig and the young boys of Bern. The first game, of course, was at home to Red Star Belgrade. Often that means the last match is a dead rubber, and that's the case here. But it may well still be a feisty game. They might be up for it for a historical win. Besides, when I buy the tickets, the flights, the accommodation, I often don't know what's going to happen in the group. So I wouldn't want myself or yourself as Mutton Easters to miss out on a footballing adventure in a new city and a new stadium. So join me for the match day vlog of Manchester City away at Red Star Belgrade. Well then, Mutton Easters, I had images of this being a freezing cold, dank, dull, grey, boring city. The weather's mild and this city has got a lot about it. It's much more interesting than I'd have thought. I had, I had meant to bring the introduction from the Republic Square, but there was some massive political rally going on and I couldn't even hear myself think. Besides which, I might have been lifted maybe for filming something I shouldn't be filming. Of course, this is the night before the game. This is the Tuesday evening before the 5.45 UK or 6.45 local time kickoff on the Wednesday afternoon. Now, I usually bring you a food segment at the beginning on the day of the match, but I'm bringing you something the night before. A, because it's interesting and caught my eye, but B, because I am meeting people I haven't seen for ages and I don't know if I'll be able to poke the camera around. When I film at restaurants, the meal is not the same as a normal meal. If I film, I have to keep stopping. And of course, that meal might be a little more formal, but I will either take some still photos or some silent video, which I'll then voice over and commentate on. Now, I hope I can get a table here. It looks a bit busy, but not full. Anyway, I'll eat outside if I have to. This restaurant's called Curry Souls, advertises itself as Sri Lankan street food. And you say, Mutton, what are you doing? What about local food? Well, first of all, that is going to be tried tomorrow lunchtime. Also, it's not as if the world's brimming with Serbian restaurants and I'm missing some great local cuisine, nice as I'm sure it will be, but also because some of you ask me, oh, do you like Asian food in Europe? And the answer is, well, ooh, a bit of a mixed bag for me. It's usually better in Britain. But I've seen a dish or some dishes which I rarely even see in Britain. And they say that they can cook it really spicy, so I'm up for the challenge. So I think you all know which one I'm going to go for. If you've not seen my videos before, just in case of any doubt, the hottest. And some of you don't like sitting by a bar or a counter, but here you have a great view of the kitchen, so no complaints there. So that's the one I'm going for. It says here, spice intense but not too hot. I think we can rectify that problem. And in case that was too fast for you to read, I had a choice of Serbian style, Sri Lankan style, or are you nuts? And yes, I'm nuts. Drat and double drat. They're out of the materials to make number four, are you nuts? So what they've done instead, they said, well, we'll make number three, the Sri Lankan style, as hot as possible. They say it's pretty hot, but is that by local standards or our standards? I don't know, but they have given me some extra ammunition here. And black pork, of course, is a curry that you don't see too often in the UK at all. It's why I came here, because I saw it on the menu. Not many Indian restaurants in the UK serve pork at all. They generally have to be Carolan or Sri Lankan or somewhere else in southern India. And rather interestingly, it comes served on a bed of gnocchi. I guess they 
don't have the equipment to make the parottas, the flaky South Indian breads, but never mind. I'm sure it'll be interesting and tasty. And as for the beer, when that comes in a few sets, I've been recommended the Salto Lager on Draft, a local brew. OK, time to talk football whilst we're waiting for the food. I have Salto Lager, a local brew, as recommended. Hey, that's good. That's good. I hope the pub I go to later has this, because although I might do a little reel of a Guinness if I see one, it's sure to be rank and this is nice. And dead rubbers are notoriously difficult to predict. I'm not quite sure how Red Star are going to take this. Are they going to go for glory or are they going to concentrate on their league and field a second string team as well? I have a feeling they might go for glory. I've seen a lot of the same prediction for City's starting lineup tomorrow, and I agree with it. Ortega is certain to start in goal. We think Sergio Gomez at left back, Rico Lewis at right back, Ake and Akanji. That's the bit which might differ a little bit. Maybe Guardiola will play. And in midfield, I expect to see Kovacic pairing up with Calvin Phillips, who's hardly started a game of late, Masaias Nunes in a more attacking role, on the wings Jack Grealish, Oscar Bob and Julian Alvarez up front. Let's see how many of those are right tomorrow. And some of these players really are in need of game time. As for what I predict is going to happen, well, I think if Belgrade are up for this, they'll get a draw or a win. If they're not, they won't. OK, sometimes they're boring games, but don't forget, a few seasons ago, Kyle Walker got sent off in a dead rubber away at RB Leipzig in the last game of the group stage, so anything can happen. That looks like mine, I think. OK, so the main course has arrived, or my only course has arrived, down to the table. OK, the lager, of course, was an excellent call from the waiter. Let's see how it goes with the pork. And the gnocchi. It's really tasty, but it ain't very spicy. Maybe for locals it is spicy, so I'm going to have to add some of that sauce. Let's slap it all over. Now that's more like it. It's more like a viciously hot Mexican sauce. Wow, it is a good sauce. It's like a habanero sauce. I'm going to love this. In fact, when they call that sauce are you nuts, they mean it. It is hot. It is just the ticket. Anyway, I'm going to get on with this delectable Balkan Sri Lankan fusion creation, and I'll see you in a bit. That Matanistas was a great dish, much better than I expected it to be. And I know for sure it is difficult for them to get ingredients out here. I know the people who own probably the best Indian restaurant in Zagreb, and sometimes they can't even get fresh green chilies. One footnote though, this sauce is not for children. It was the ticket for me, but wow, it was hot. Anyway, I'm going to drink up, have my slurp and head off to licensed premises where hopefully Manchester United are going to get an unfavourable result tonight. Good day again, Matanistas. This trip's had it all, really. Some unsavoury incidents in the bar I was in last night. I'll talk about that later. And a power cut at my hotel. Cold shower? 40 minutes late to meet my companions for lunch. Hope they'll be forgiving. Anyway, I've not had traditional Serbian food before, but I've had other foods in the region, so I think I know what I'm going to get. But I'm meeting my godson and her mother, who will know what they're doing. So for once, I won't have to order. Ah. So. OK, as luck had it, there was a bottle of something nice waiting for me on the table. It's called Regent Reserve. I've never had a Serbian wine. I assume it is Serbian. Yeah, that's pretty pleasant. And I, Matanistas, can pronounce myself match fit today.
and I've been informed that this wine is 50% Merlot and 50% Cab. Let's call it a Balkans blend, shall we? Now, I've been warned that these peppers are very hot, so I'm just going to plough in regardless. And hot they are, oh, Christ. <laughs> Now, the cream cheese, the kaimak on a piece of bread. Mmm, really rather pleasant. Is there garlic in this? Very soft and creamy. Okay, Ivar, I've had this before, I love it. I actually like it as a sort of garnish or condiment with the meat that they grill over here. I had it before in Croatia and it's every bit as good here. Now, rather than diving straight into the red wine, I was told it's traditional to start with a raki, and I've got a plum raki here. This is absolutely not my type of drink, but you know, Metonistas, I will always take one for the team. Yeah, that's just burnt a hole in my throat. Anyway, it's both Sandra and Tristan's first city match, so I have to ask Tristan for a score prediction today. 1-0 City. Okay. With Poetry scoring. Okay. I'm going to go for 2-2 two, two because I think they're going to go for it big time just for the glory, even though they can't qualify for either European competition from here. Now then, Muttonistas, I was advised by Tristan to try this bread. It looks like a cross between a cornbread and a muffin to me, probably too sweet. But first, we better have a quick slurp to cleanse the palate. Dip it in that Ivar. Yeah, that's what it is. It's half muffin, half cornbread. Serbian-American fusion, perhaps? Okay, Metanistas, in the jiffy, the mains have arrived, and I'm going to let Sandra explain them because she understands Serbian, and the waiter has explained the dishes to her. Okay, far away, Sandra. This one is veal under the pecker, so it's under bell. Okay, veal, veal under the pecker, which is like a way of roasting meats here. This is cabbage with uh, dry meat. Cabbage with dried meat. This is just some grilled meat. Grilled meat. I just asked. And how did you ask for it to be cooked? Uh, I just asked for uh, meat. Uh, okay. But if you were to have a steak, how would you have it cooked? Uh, yeah. And that is the correct answer, Metanistas. Right. On to the dishes. First of all, the roasted veal under the pecker. It goes without saying, I chose the fattier of the two pieces and it was so tender it was actually falling off my fork. It was garnished with a Glasgow salad, lathered in the juices of the meat, so... Whilst I'm not a big potato man, that is a very tasty potato because it's just soaked up all the juices. Okay, now I scoused a bit of Tristan's grilled meal, put a bit of Ivar on top of it. Well, even though it's cooked through, which as Matanese as you know isn't quite my style, it's very juicy. I mean, it's a nice piece of meat that is. And finally, Matanistas, the dish I've really been looking forward to, the cabbage with dried meat. I suspect the cabbage has a slightly pickled taste, that's just from the smell, I might be wrong. And the meat is definitely smoked, and it's really juicy. Just look at that, I think this is belly pork. Oh yeah, and that for me is absolutely the winner, Metanistas. Deserves a quick slurp. And I will enjoy polishing off as much of this as I can, and I'll see you after the dinner. So that was a pretty good lunch. Uh, I've been to other regional restaurants in this part of the world, and I thought that was quite good, especially the cabbage. Anyway, it's not too far away from match time, but when young Tristan comes back from the bathroom, I've got a little surprise for him. Okay, Tristan, give it, it's nearly Christmas. I have a little surprise oh, gift for thank you. you. Very much, Jason. Okay, yes, please unbox or unpackage it. Oh, thank you, Jason. Oh, it's a 
someone yeah. put all that onto the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it up for everybody to see. And the back. The man at the reception is not pleased by the team. And what better gift could you give somebody for Christmas this year? Okay, nearly time to go to the match. I'm actually staying in a quaint old street called Skadarska. Possibly a bit touristy, but I've heard a lot of locals speaking here. Anyway, there's a little bar at the top of the street where I want a quick point or two before I start making my way to the stadium. Video as I walk. Okay, Mutton Easter's about an hour and 40 before kickoff. No drinking in the stadium, so I've popped into the Old Town Bar. First gulp always reserved for my Instagram little reels. But it is actually quite a pleasant little stout. This is a bit of a cross between a black beer and a chocolate stout. Anyway, as I said earlier, I'm match fit. Come on, City. So, I don't actually like these 6.45 or 5.45 kickoffs too much. Thankfully, I don't think I remember ever going to one at the Etihad. Anyway, here it's probably a blessing in disguise because everything closes a bit early. And they wanted to take us in buses to the stadium for safety ridiculously early. I can't sit in a stadium for two and a half hours before the game. We've taken a taxi in the predictably bad traffic and the team news has come out. It's sort of as I predicted, but two slight changes to what I thought was going to happen. A chap called Mika Hamilton, never seen him play before, comes in at right back. But Pep Guardiola does not give out starts to anybody, so he must have been performing well in training. And rather than Aki and Akanji in the centre of defence, we've got Akanji and Johnny Stones. I think I know what's going on here. It's practising playing a way of playing without Rodri. Left back, we have Sergio Gomez, as predicted. In the middle of the field, Kovacic and Calvin Phillips. Good to see him getting a start. And the front four players are Oscar Bob, Rico Lewis, Jack Grealish and Matthias Nunes. So who's playing up front? Is it a false nine again? It must be. And with apologies to Red Star supporters, I don't know their first team too well. I recognise some of the names from the first game and the whole city seems excited about the game. So we'll see when we get to the stadium. But I think they're up for it and I think their crowd's up to it. As for what will happen, who knows? I mean, I guess it's going to be a bit of an error-ridden game, given that we've got people playing out of position. Surely this isn't their normal 1-11, to or maybe it is. I don't know. Anyway, off to the stadium we go. Yeah. OK, Mutton Easters, at this point I did run into a few technical problems. I accidentally switched off my microphone. It does come back on again just after the first City goal. In the meantime, I met a famous blogger, JSMHD, hope I've got the letters right, 44. Check out his excellent football videos, a lot of City content there. And the opening City goal was a beautiful move. First time passes from Grealish and Nunes over to Michael Hamilton, who scored a cracker on his debut. Quick VAR check, we're so far from the other side of the stadium with a running track in front of us that I couldn't see exactly who did what except that Mika Hamilton did score on his debut. in and this is not the greatest game of football I've ever watched. In fact, the two most exciting things are all the tactical fouls from Red Star and the steward dipping his hand in my pocket to confiscate all my cones at the entrance.
Well, if it carries on like this, Mutton Easterners, this is going to be like the easiest edit ever. Very little happened in that half. Obviously, Micah Hamilton notching his debut goal, and then the crossover, which Oscar Bob nearly got on the end of. His only real sort of piece of joy in the whole half, I guess he's not really a false nine. At the back, we've looked reasonably comfortable. They've been trying to lock long balls over, and the only other achievement Red Star have had in front of a packed house, this is not very ambitious at all, is to try and break the record number of foals in the Guinness Book of Records. Only one yellow card issued, but every time they lose the ball, it's like there's an immediate foul. I hope for better in the second half, but I don't expect it. Go on. Well, having sat off City for the whole of the first half, Red Star decided to press. Gave them a little bit of joy up front, but it's left vast spaces at the back because they've been over-edging the pudding. And Oscar Bob ran onto a ball beautifully and killed it along the floor into the right corner. 2-0 City, I think that's probably it. And we might be getting 18 points for the first time ever in the group stages of the Champions League. And it's probably the last because they're changing the format next year. I also understand that's Oscar Bob's first goal for the first team. I think since the half-time change of Foden in the middle to move Bob into a more natural wide position has helped him a lot and he's playing a lot better. Well, City have brought on somebody called Sasha, who I've not heard of before, for Kovacic. Not saying he was directly involved, but there was some sloppy play. We didn't retain possession, and we allowed them in. They've got a goal back, 14 minutes left. Is there something in this game after all? less than 10 minutes left and I feel City are overdoing it trying to wind the clock down and keeping possession the vast spaces behind them if we can get in and we have nearly got in I think getting a third goal is the way to kill it and as for the referee from Azerbaijan I mean does he know what the words persistence and fouling actually mean Finally, he got the card out, but I'm not that bothered if he's going to give a penalty. Don't know who's going to take it, though. We struggle sometimes to put our penalties away when Haaland isn't on the pitch, but there, he struck it pretty sweetly into the corner, unsavable. 3-1 to City, I think that is finally it, and I think maybe that's his first goal. Oh. Well, we switched off, 
just as the board went up for five added minutes. In my view, OK, I'm not a professional football coach. Nobody should ever be scoring directly from a corner. It means somebody's not doing their job properly. Anyway, just four minutes to see out now. Let's hope there's no late drama. Oh. So we have a minimum of half an hour hold back here. I think it's going to be a bit more than that because those ultras at the other end, they're still all there. Okay, Metanistas, I am in a place called the Irish Bar, I think that's what it's called, in the main shopping street in Belgrade, after City's 3-2 win. I hope the sound holds up well here because my microphone's clapped out. I'm having a Guinness of all things, which is surprisingly good here, actually. Now, the beer has come from a fresh keg, which is maybe a bit of a cheat, but maybe I was lucky, but I'm enjoying this. Very, very quick analysis of the match because a lot of it isn't really relevant because it was such a dead rubber and Belgrade didn't really come out to play until the second half. So, so negative in front of a packed house and a great atmosphere. I think at times they were trying to break the Guinness Book of Records record, if there is one, for niggly professional fouls. As soon as they lost the ball, anybody tried to turn them. A Belgrade player was taking their city counterpart out and the referee from Azerbaijan let an awful lot of that go. It created a pretty stodgy first half, I have to say. City obviously had the goal from Micah Hamilton. What a magnificent strike that was. I, I believe Mateus Nunes supplied the assist, but I was so busy filming it, I couldn't pick everybody out at the other end of the pitch. Nunes might have scored from a good position, and then towards the end of the half, Hamilton slotted over a delicious ball that Oscar Bob, who was struggling a bit in his false nine ball, nearly, nearly got on the end of it. I think it was Hamilton giving the assist at least. Second half, completely different. I have to say, Red Star finally took the handbrake off and started pressing City. And we had some problems playing it out of the back, but when we did, there were vast open spaces because I think they over the pudding a bit with the press that they were performing. And it led to some great breakaway positions, which I don't think we took advantage of as well as we should. Some of our forward going players were in acres of space and putting Foden as the false nine opened up a lot more avenues and made it more comfortable for Oscar Bob playing in a more natural position. Micah Hamilton playing a, a right winger, I mean, that is not his position. It's the First one I've actually seen him play, but he does actually play further back in the field when he plays. In the midfield, Nunes, Phillips, Kovacic, they were all doing pretty well in the first half, but it was pretty comfortable. A little bit more tricky in the second half, though, and after Oscar Bob scored his first first team goal for City, we tried to control the game through possession and run the clock down, and it didn't work. I said at the time, if they're going to press that high, surely the best way to kill this game off was to get the third goal. It was a goal which was caused by a sloppy turnover, I think sparked City into life, and we won a penalty at the other end. With so many new players playing, I couldn't quite pick out who it was. I think it was Micah Hamilton. Looked to me like a very dramatic dive, but I need to check the footage to see how genuine a penalty that was. And the Azerbaijani referee seemed to be still stopping encroachment when the penalty was actually taken. I thought it was going to be retaken, but uh, obviously everything was all fair and just. Sloppy second goal for Red Star conceded from a corner. My view is you should never concede directly from a corner. And then City managed out the four minutes of added time that was still left. What does that tell us? Not a lot. 
probably gives Guardiola some useful information about how his players can play in alternative positions. But we gave lots of players a rest for the home game against Crystal Palace. When we beat Leipzig at home, I mentioned how important this was. So I think we'll see a full strength lineup on Saturday before we go to the Club World Cup in Saudi Arabia shortly afterwards. And that's going to leave me to wrap up the video, Matanistas. My next game, of course, will be that home game against Palace, and I'll be going to Saudi Arabia the week after. Just a reminder, if you like my videos and enjoy them, please hit that like button because it pushes them up the algorithm and more people get to see them. I'm sure we all want that, Matanistas. But in the meantime, please remember to keep liking, keep sharing, keep subscribing. Please tell your friends about me. But most of all, don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.